You all ready to play some Nevada trivia now? I'm, 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 only, I'm, I'm only half joking here. Let's talk about this issue because it's, it's up there in polls. Voters are really concerned about it, as you all know. What you might not know is that Las Vegas and Reno are the vibrant economic engines for the state of Nevada and are also two of the fastest warming cities in the, in the country. Uh, in certain months of the year, the heat is already an emergency situation for residents and for tourists walking up and down the strip. So I'm going to start with you, uh, Mr. Vice President. What specific policies would you implement that would keep Las Vegas and Reno livable, but also not hurt those economies? It is the existential threat that humanity faces, global warming. I've been out detecting you have a, a facility where you have the, one of the largest, largest solar panel arrays in the world. And, it's, and if it, when the four stage is completed, <clears throat> we'll be able to take care of 60,000 homes for every single bit of their needs. And what I would do is, number one, work on providing uh, the $47 billion we have for tech and for to making sure we find answers, is to provide a way to transmit that wind and solar energy across the network of, of, of in, the, in the United States. Invest in battery technology. I would immediately reinstate all of the elimination of, the, of, the, of, the, of the, what Trump has eliminated in terms of EPA. I would secondly make sure that we had 500,000 new new charging stations in every new highway we built in the United States of America or repaired. I would make sure that we once again made sure that we got the Miley standards back up, which would have saved over 12 billion barrels of oil had he not walked away from it. And I would, I would invest in rail, in rail. Rail can take hundreds of thousands, millions of cars off the road if we have high speed rail. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. I want to get, I want to get some of the rest of you in on this because you all have plans. Yeah. Mayor Bloomberg, let me read, let me read what, what you said about uh, this issue. You said you want to intensify U.S. and international actions to stop the expansion of coal. How yeah. exactly are you going to do that? Well, already we've closed 304 out of the 530 coal-fired power plants in the United States, and we've closed 80 out of the two or 300 that are in Europe. Uh, Bloomberg Philanthropies working with the Sierra Club. That's one of the things you do. But just let's start at the beginning. If you're president, the first thing you do the first day is you rejoin the Paris Agreement. This is just ridiculous for us to drop out. Two, America's responsibility is to be the leader in the world. And if we don't, we're the ones that are going to get hurt just as much as anybody else. And that's why I don't want to have us cut off all relationships with China, because you will never solve this problem without China and India, Western Europe and America. That's where most of the greenhouse uh, gets. Uh, Let me just finish one other thing. The, I believe, and you can uh, tell me whether this is right, but the solar array that the vice president was talking about is being closed because it's not economic, that you can put solar panels in and to modern technology, even more modern than that. I, all right. Mayor, I just I want to let Senator Warren jump in here, just because you've said something that's really specific to Nevada. And, and, and the, the tension here in this state is between people who want renewable energy and people who want conservation on public lands. Yeah. Eighty-five percent of Nevada is managed by the federal government. You have said uh, that you are going to have an executive order that would stop drilling uh, on, on public land, stop mining, which is a huge industry here. you got to have lithium. you got to have copper for renewable energy. How do you do that? So look, I think we should stop all new drilling and mining on public lands and all offshore drilling. If we need to make exceptions because there are specific minerals that we've got to have access to, then we locate those and we do it not in a way that just is about the profits of giant industries, but in a way that is sustainable for the environment. We cannot continue to let our public lands be used for profits by those who don't care about our environment and are not making it better. Look, I'm going to say something that is really controversial in Washington, but I think I'm safe to say this here in Nevada. I believe in science, and I believe that the way that we're going to deal with this problem is that we are going to increase by tenfold our investment in science. There's an upcoming $27 trillion market worldwide for green, and much of what is needed has not yep. yet been invented. My proposal is let's invent it here in the United States and then say, we invented in the U.S., you've got to build right. it in the U.S. We're gonna, That's we're a gonna, million we're gonna, new manufacturing We're going to stick to this topic, but Senator Sanders, I'm going I'm to move to fracking. 
you want a total ban on nat natural gas extraction, yep. fracking in the next five years. The industry obviously supports a lot of a lot of jobs around the country, yep. including thousands in the battleground state of Pennsylvania. One unit official there told the New York Times, quote, if we end up with a Democratic candidate that supports a fracking ban, I'm going to tell my members that either you don't vote or you vote for the other guy. What do you tell these workers? It's supporting a big industry right now, sir. What I tell these workers is that the scientists are telling us that if we don't act incredibly boldly within the next six, seven years, there will be irreparable damage done, not just to Nevada, not just to Vermont or Massachusetts, but to the entire world. Joe said it right. This is an existential threat. You know what that means, Chuck? That means we're fighting for the future of this planet. And the Green New Deal that I support, by the way, will create up to 20 million good paying jobs as we move our energy system away from fossil fuel to energy efficiency and sustainable energy. This is a moral issue, my friends. We have to ha take the responsibility of making okay. sure that the planet we leave our children and grandchildren is a planet okay. that is healthy and so, habitable. That is more important than I, the I, profits I, of the fossil fuel industry. I want to keep this going. Senator Klobuchar, you're, you're not on the same page at a total uh, ban of fracking. You call it a transitional fuel. But scientists are sounding this alarm now. Uh, do you take these warnings that maybe fracking is a step backwards, not a step forward, not a transition? I, I've made it very clear that we have to review all of the permits that are out there right now for natural gas um, and then make decisions on each one of them and then not grant new ones until we make sure that it's safe. But it is a transitional fuel. And I want to add something that really hasn't been brought up by my colleagues. This is a crisis, and a lot of our plans are very similar to get to carbon neutral uh, by 2045, 2050, something like that. But we're not going to be able to pass this unless we bring people with us. I'm looking at these incredible senators from Nevada, Catherine Cortez Masto and Jackie Rosen, um, and I'm thinking that they know how important this is. And you can do this in a smart way. One get back into that international climate change agreement. Two, clean power rules, bring those back. And the president can do this herself without Congress, as well as the gas mileage standard. But when it comes to putting a sweep, yeah. a price on carbon, this is very important, okay. Chuck. We have to make sure that that money goes back directly yeah. as dividends to the people that are gonna need help for paying their bills. Right. Otherwise, Sen we're not Senator gonna Warren. pass it. So there has yeah. to be a heart to the policy to get this done. Senator Warren, address the worker issue, if you don't so mind, as I, well. I, actually, can you address I, the worker issue? Yes, uh, we can have a Green New Deal and create jobs. We need people in infrastructure who will help build. We have they can lose that job tomorrow, we though. That's what they're concerned yes, about. Those jobs are for tomorrow. Those are the ones we need to be working on to harden our infrastructure right now. But listen to Senator Klobuchar's point. She says we have to think smaller in order to get it passed. I don't think that's the right approach here. Why can't we get anything passed in Washington? Washington on climate. Everyone understands the urgency, but we've got two problems. The first is corruption, an industry that makes its money felt all through Washington. The first thing I want to do in Washington is pass my anti-corruption bill so that we can start making the changes we need to make on climate. And the second is the filibuster. If you're not willing to roll back the filibuster, right. then you're giving the fossil Senator. fuel industry a veto. Thank you, Vanessa. All of the work Senator, thank you. Vanessa's got the and next question. Respond, she, she Vice President Biden, and, and you have said that sure you want to hold want to oil and gas executives accountable for their role in harming our planet. You have even suggested that you might put them in jail. Which companies are you talking about and how far are you willing to go? I'm willing to go as far as we have to go. First of all, I would eliminate all the subsidies we have for oil and gas. <clears throat> eliminate it, period. That would save millions and millions of billions of dollars. Number two, 
I think that any executive who is engaged in, and by the way, minority communities are the communities being most badly hurt by the way in which we deal with climate change. They are the ones who become the victims. That's where the asthma is. That's where the, that, that's where the groundwater supply has been polluted. That's where, in fact, people, in fact, do not have the opportunity to be able to get away from everything from uh, still asbestos in the walls of our schools. I have a trillion dollar program for infrastructure that will provide for thousands and thousands of new jobs, not $15 an hour, but $50 an hour plus benefits, unions, unions being able to do that. And what it does is it will change the nature. Look, here's the last point I want I mean, my time is going to run out. Here's the last point I want to make to you. On day one, when I'm elected president, I'm going to invite all of the members of the Paris Accord to Washington, D.C. They make up 85 percent of the problem. They know me. I'm used to dealing with international relations. I will get them to up the ante Vice in President way. Biden, you didn't answer to my questions. I thought I did. What would you do with these companies that are responsible for the destruction of our planet? What would I do with them? I would make sure they, number one, stop. Number two, if you demonstrate that they, in fact, have done things already that are bad and they've been lying, they should be able to be sued. They should be able to be held personally accountable. And they should, and not only, not only the company, not the stockholders, but the CEOs of those companies. They should be engaged. And it's a little bit like, look, this is the industry we should be able to sue. We should go after, just like we did the drug companies, just like we did with the tobacco companies. The only company we can't go after are gun manufacturers you, because of my buddy here, but that's we're, a different We're going to stay, we're gonna stay on the topic. Uh, my, my question is to Mayor Bloomberg. Mayor Bloomberg, your business is heavily invested in China. I think you mentioned that a few questions back. The number one producer in the world of carbon emissions. How far would you go to force China to reduce those emis emissions and tackle the climate crisis? Well, you're not going to go to war with them. You have to negotiate with them and try to, and we've seen how well that works with tariffs that are hurting us. What you have to do is convince the Chinese that it is in their interest as well. Their people are going to die just as our people are going to die, and we work together. In all fairness, the Chinese have slowed down. It's India that is an even bigger problem. But it is an enormous problem. Nobody's doing anything about it. We could right here in America make a big difference. We're closing the coal-fired power plants. If we enforce some of the rules on fracking so that they don't release methane into the air and into the water, you'll make a big difference. But we're not going to get rid of fracking for a while. And we frack incidentally not just natural gas. You frack oil as well. It is a technique. And when it's done poorly, like they're doing in too many places where the methane gets out into the air, it is very damaging. But it's a transition fuel, I think the senator said it right. We want to go to all renewables, but that's still many years from now. And we, before, I think the senator mentioned 2050 for some data. No scientist thinks the numbers for 2050 or 2050 anymore. The 2040, 2035, the world is coming apart faster than any scientific uh, study had predicted. Uh, We've just got to do right, something yeah, Mayor, 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 Mayor Buttigieg, uh, your, your thoughts. Let's be real about the deadline. It's not 2050, it's not 2040, it's not 2030, it's 2020. Because if we don't elect a president who actually believes in climate science now, we will never meet any of the other scientific or policy deadlines that we need to. So first of all, let's make sure we're actually positioned to win. Which once again, if we put forward the two of the most polarizing figures on this stage as the only option is going to be a real struggle. Now, I've got a plan to get us carbon neutral by 2050. And I think everybody up here has a plan that more or less does the same. So the real question is, how are we going to actually get it done? We need leadership to make this a national project that breaks down the partisan and political tug of war that prevents anything from getting done. How do you do it? Well, first of all, making sure that those jobs are available quickly. Secondly, ensuring that we are pulling in those very sectors who have been made to feel like they're part of the problem, from farming to industry, and fund as well as urge them to do the right thing. And then, global climate diplomacy. I'm, I'm a little skeptical of the idea that convincing is going to do the trick when it comes to working with China. America has repeatedly overestimated our ability to shape Chinese ambitions. But what we can do right. is ensure that we Mayor use the hard tools of Let me hear from Senator Warner. 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 To enforce what has to happen. Yes, I want to make sure that the question of environmental justice gets more than a glancing blow in this debate. Because for generations now in this country, 
uh, toxic waste dumps, polluting factories have been located in or near communities of color over and over and over. And the consequences are felt in the health of young African-American babies. It's felt in the health of seniors, people with compromised immune systems. It's also felt economically. Who wants to move into an area where the air smells bad or you can't drink the water? I have a commitment of a trillion dollars to repair the damage that this nation has permitted to inflict on communities of color for generations now. We have to own up to our responsibility. We cannot simply right. talk about climate change in big global terms. We need to talk about it in terms of rescuing right. the communities that have been damaged. Senator, Senator Warren, thank you. Howie? Thank you. I want to ask you about something else that is important to people here. I want to ask you about Latinos owning one out of every four new small businesses in the United States. Many of them have benefited from President Trump's tax cuts, and they may be hesitant about new taxes or regulations. Will taxes on their small businesses go up under your administration? No, taxes on small businesses won't go up. Matter of fact, we're gonna make sure there's more money available for small businesses in the Latino community and the black community to be able to get the capital to start businesses. At the Treasury Department, there's gonna be a window available where we can significantly increase the amount of money available so people can borrow the money to get started. They have demonstrated they're incredibly successful. We should not be raising taxes on them. We should start be rewarding work, not just wealth. That's why we have to change the tax code the way it is. That's why the wealthy start have to, have to start to pay their fair share, and that's why we have to focus on giving people the ability to garner wealth, generate wealth. And that's why this whole idea of redlining, lending to people in areas, wasn't the cause of Wall Street failing. The greed of Wall Street was the reason why it occurred, not redlining. And lastly, I want to say, look, the idea of China China is, in their Belt and Road proposal, they're taking the dirtiest coal in the world, mostly out of Mongolia, and spreading it around the world. It's clear. It made it clear when you called them to Washington in the first 100 days. If you continue, you will suffer severe consequences because the rest of the world will impose tariffs and on everything you're selling because you are undercutting Can the I, entire thank economy. You. Thank you, Mr. Can Vice I, President. Mayor Buttigieg, will taxes on those businesses go up under you? Not if they are small businesses. I mean, what we've got to do is level the playing field where a company like Amazon or <clears throat> Chevron is paying literally zero on billions of dollars in profits. And it puts small businesses like the ones that are revitalizing my own city, often Latino owned on our west side, at a disadvantage. We need to recognize that investing in Latino entrepreneurship is not just an investment in the Latino community, it is an investment in the future of America. And, and it is time I, for a president I, who understands the value of immigration in lifting up all of our communities and our country. We're getting the exact opposite message from the current president. And so, it is time to recognize not just the diversity of the Latino community, but the importance of issues like economic empowerment, right, like health care, as we well as the tax system. Very quickly, Senator Warren. We Come. have an entrepreneurship gap in America, and that is a gap between white entrepreneurs and black and Latino entrepreneurs. And the principal reason for this is they don't have the money for equity to get the businesses started. It's about a $7 billion gap. We want to have sense. real entrepreneurship and a level playing field. I have a plan to put the $7 billion in to have the fund, fund managed by Senator, the people who are we, routinely when, when cut out. Time, it Senator. can't just be about taxes. Thank we you, need Senator. to when, make when, an investment yeah. to level the playing field and end the black Thanks, right. Right. Look, I want to, I want to get at something. Mayor Bloomberg, uh, the, the vice president talked about redlining. The only one here that Mayor, started a business. Mayor, maybe Mayor Bloomberg, you, you seem to imply that redlining and stopping that is some that stopping redlining is somehow contributed to the financial no, crisis. That's exactly wrong. And that was the implication that came out in the quote. So I want to give you a chance to clarify this. I've been well on the record against redlining since I was I worked on Wall Street. I was against it during the financial crisis. I've been against it since. The financial crisis came about because the people that took the mortgages packaged them and other people bought them. Those were that was where all the disaster was. It redlining is still a practice some places and we've got to cut it out. But but that's it's just not true. But I was going to say we maybe want to talk about businesses. I'm the only one here that I think that's ever started a business. Is that fair? Okay. 
What we need is, I can tell you in New York City, we had programs, there are mentoring programs for the young business people so they can learn how to start a business. We had programs that could get them seed capital. Okay. We had programs to get branch banking in their neighborhoods because if you don't have a branch bank there, you can't get a checking account, can't get a checking account, you can't get a loan, you can't get a loan, you can't get a mortgage, then you don't have any wealth. We, there's ways to fix this and it doesn't take trillions of dollars. It takes us right. to focus on the problems of Senator, small Senator business. Sanders, 40, Five seconds, and we're going to move on. Thank you. Senator Sanders, 45 seconds. Just, all right. You know, when we talk about a corrupt political system bought by billionaires like Mr. Bloomberg, it manifests itself in a tax code in which not only is Amazon and many other major corporations, some owned by the wealthiest people in this country, not paying a nickel in taxes, we have the insane situation that billionaires today, if you can believe it, have an effective tax rate lower than the middle class. Senator, so maybe you're just the tax code. Why are you complaining? Who <laughs> wrote the code? You, you and your, did. You and you your and campaign. You and your camp. Not me. Oh, you on. and your campaign contributions, electing people who represent the wealthy and the powerful. Yes, those are the folks. Democrats. Thank those you. are well, and Republicans too. Okay. And George W. Right. Bush as uh, well. Chuck. Senator Klobuchar, let me, let me, let me I was address. Just, I was thinking I understand that, but be Senator a Klobuchar. boxing rematch on Saturday yeah. in Vegas, <laughs> and those guys should go down there. Senator Klobuchar, I actually want to get you to something about Senator Sanders tweeted last year, billionaires should not exist. Okay. What say you? Um, I believe in capitalism, but I think our, the goal of someone in government and a president of the United States should be a check on that. I'm not going to limit what people make, but I think right now our tax code is so tilted against regular people, and that is what's wrong. I was thinking of your question about small businesses. The small businesses I talk to, they have trouble getting employees because their employees don't have child care. We should have universal child care. And we have not been talking enough about Donald Trump. And what's, let's just talk about Donald Trump, because he signed that tax bill that helped the wealthy, and he went down to Mar-a-Lago. And he said to all his friends, you just got a lot richer. That is exhibit A. And I can tell you the hardworking people in Nevada were not in that room. So the key to me is to yeah. not limit what people can make, but make yep. sure that we okay, have a you. government that is fair yeah, for did. everyone. So Senator Sanders, what did you mean that you don't think they should I'll exist? Tell you what, I mean. what did that mean? We have a grotesque and immoral distribution of wealth and income. Mike Bloomberg owns more wealth than the bottom 125 million Americans. That's wrong, that's immoral. That should not be the case when we got a half a million people sleeping out on the street, where we have kids who cannot afford to go to college, when we have 45 million people dealing with student debt. We have enormous problems facing this country, and we cannot continue seeing a situation where in the last three years, Billionaires in this country saw an $850 billion increase in their wealth. Congratulations, Mr. Bloomberg. But the average American last year saw less than a 1% yeah. increase in his or her income. That's Mayor, wrong. Mayor Bloomberg, should you exist? I can't speak for all billionaires. All I know is I've been very lucky, made a lot of money, and I'm giving it all away to make this country better. And a good chunk of it goes to the Democratic Party as well. Is it too much? Have you earned too much money? Is, has it been an obscene amount of Should you have earned that much money? Yes. I worked very hard yeah. for it. And I'm giving okay. it away. Right. Thank you. Hallie. Mayor Buttigieg, Senator Sanders. Senator Sanders has a proposal that would require all large companies to turn over up to 20% of their ownership to employees over time. Is that a good idea? I think that employee ownership of companies is a great idea. I'm not sure it makes sense to command those companies to do it. If we really want to deliver less inequality in this country, then we've got to start with the tax code. We've got to start with investments in how people are able to live the American dream, which is in serious, serious decline. Matter of fact, last time I checked, the list of countries to live out the American dream, in other words, to be born at the bottom and come out at the top, we're not even in the top 10. Number one place to live out the American dream right now is Denmark. And as the, I think, lone person on this stage who's not a millionaire, let alone a billionaire, 
I believe that part of what needs to change is for the voices of the communities that haven't felt heard on Wall Street or in Washington to actually be brought to Capitol Hill. It's why I am building a politics designed around inclusion, designed around belonging, because the one thing that will definitely perpetuate the income inequality we're living with right now is for Donald Trump to be reelected because we polarized this country with the wrong nominee. Senator, Senator Sanders, it's your policy. You. Uh, can I, that's to me. Right? It is your policy. Thank you. It is my policy, and I'm very proud of that policy. All right. What we need to do to deal with this grotesque level of income and wealth inequality is make sure that those people who are working, you know what, Mr. Bloomberg, wasn't you who made all that money. Maybe your workers played some role in that as well. And it is important that those workers are able to share the benefits. Also, when we have so many people who go to work every day and they feel not good about their jobs, they feel like cogs in a machine. I want workers to be able to sit on corporate boards as well so they can have some say over what happens to their lives. Mayor Bloomberg, you own a large company. Would you support what Senator Sanders is proposing? Absolutely not. I can't think of a ways that would make it easier for Donald Trump to get reelected than listening to this conversation. It's ridiculous. We're not going to throw out capitalism. We tried that. Other countries tried that. It was called communism, and it just didn't work. So, so let me make a proposal that will work, that has a, a not only support from a majority of Democrats, but also from a majority of independents and a majority of Republicans. And that is a two-cent wealth tax on all fortunes above $50 million. You hit a billion, you got to pay a few pennies more. This is a tax on the top one-tenth of one percent in America, and it permits us to start to restructure our economy. It means we can afford universal child care for every baby in this country age zero to five. It means we can have universal pre-K for every child in America. It means we can raise the wages of every child care worker and preschool teacher and stop exploiting the black and brown women who do this work. It means we can put uh, $800 billion into our public schools, quadruple funding for Title I schools. And as a former special education teacher, we could fully fund IDEA so children with disabilities would get the full education they need. We could do college. We could put $50 billion into our historically black colleges and universities. And we could cancel student loan debt for 43 million Senator, Americans. Thank you. That's something a majority of Americans support a two-cent wealth tax. It is a question of values. Do we want to invest in Mr. Bloomberg or do we want right. to invest in an Senator, entire generation you. of young S owners? Senator Sanders, my next, the next question is for you. Uh, Senator Sanders, our latest NBC News Wall Street Journal poll released yesterday, two-thirds of all voters said they were uncomfortable with a socialist candidate for president. What do you say to those voters, sir? What was the result of that poll? Who was winning? The questions, the questions to you. Well, the question was that I was winning, and I think by a fairly comfortable margin. Mike mentioned that. But here is the point. Let's talk about democratic socialism, not communism, Mr. Bloomberg. That's a cheap shot. Let's talk about democratic. Let's talk about what goes on in countries like Denmark, where Pete correctly pointed out they have a much higher quality of life in many respects than we do. What are we talking about? We are living in many ways in a socialist society right now. Problem is, as Dr. Martin Luther King reminded us, we have socialism for the very rich, rugged individualism for the poor. Wait a second. When Donald, let me finish. When Donald Trump gets $800 million in tax breaks and subsidies to build, link, to build luxury condominiums, that's socialism for the rich. Wait, when wait Walmart, we have to subsidize Walmart's workers who are on Medicaid and food stamps because the wealthiest family in America pays starvation wages. That's socialism for the rich. This, this is I believe in democratic socialism okay, for enough. working people, not billionaires. Health care for all, Wait, educational Senator. opportunity all right, for all. Senator, thank you. Mayor Bloomberg, would you like to, that the, the, the for question all. was about not socialism. What a wonderful country we have. The best known socialist in the country happens to be a millionaire with three houses. What I miss here?
Well, you'll miss that I work in Washington, House One. That's the first problem. Live in Burlington, House Two. That's good. And like thousands of other Vermonters, I do have a summer Look, camp. Forgive me for that. But, Where is your home? But, which tax? Which tax haven New do you York, have your home? New York City, thank you very much. Yeah, like, and I pay all my home. taxes. <laughs> and I'm happy to do it because I get something for it. And let me say, I thought that the senator next to me was half right. Oh, I agree we should raise taxes on the... No. I disagree with the senator on the wealth tax, but I do agree with her that the rich aren't paying their fair share. We should raise taxes on the rich. I did that as mayor in New York City. I raised taxes. And if you take a look at my plans, the first thing I would do is try to convince Congress, because they've got to do it, we can't just order it, to roll back the tax cuts that the, that the um, uh, uh, Trump administration put in with the, uh, through Congress. All right, so uh, Vice, Pres Vice President Biden, weigh in on this question of, of, of Americans' feeling about socialist candidates. Well, look, let me weigh in on, you know, for 36 years and as Vice President, I was listed as the poorest man in Congress. I made money when I wrote a book about my son, and it surprised me how much it sold. First time I ever made any money. And here's the deal. The fact is that we ought to start rewarding work, not just wealth. The idea that we have a tax rate for corporate America at 21% is ridiculous. It should be at 28%. That would raise almost $800 billion a year. The idea that we have companies not paying anything at all, they should have a minimum tax of 15%. That would raise another $740 billion a year. The idea that you're able to have a capital gains tax that you pay at the rate of 20% if you are in the if you're if you are Mike Bloomberg or whomever it has a whole lot of money and someone else is paying at a war your your staffer is paying at, at, at 25 percent is wrong. That would raise another $800 billion. We should be rewarding work, not just wealth. And the American people, the middle class is getting killed and the poor have no way up. All right. Can, can uh, Vice President Biden, Trump thank you. Chuck? Uh, uh, Mayor, Mayor Buttigieg, I want, to get, I want to get you in on this because, you know, in 2000, you, re you wrote an award-winning essay. You praised Senator Sanders. You specifically praised him for embracing socialism. You have now since said that you're concerned about his policies. But I am curious about this. Are you out of touch with your own generation? Millennials, by a big chunk, embrace his version of democratic socialism. You do not. Are you out of touch with your generation? No, look, I, it's true that uh, I was into Bernie before it was cool. He was uh, a <laughs> thank you, congressman at the time. Okay. And the qualities I admired then are qualities I still respect a great deal. I never said that I agree with every part of his policy views, then or now, but I appreciate that it, at least he's straightforward and honest about him. He's honest about uh, the fact that taxes will go up on anybody making more than $29,000 to fund his health care plan. Although, again, a little bit vague about how the rest you're of that... You're not being gap honest. Is, premiums should true. be eliminated. But you're still raising those taxes. And but when we're saving you do people it, money because they don't pay any premiums, out-of-pocket expenses, co-payments, or deductibles. They're going to be much better off. But where's the other... Where's the other $25 trillion supposed to come from? It's At a good. certain point, you've got to do the math. Well, we got it all up there on the internet. It's a payroll Senator tax. A payroll tax. Well, no, but even oh. after the payroll tax, oh, you still have it. Because we have a wealth tax. Elizabeth has a good one. Ours is a little bit tougher on Mr. Bloomberg than hers. We're going to raise it in a progressive way, which deals with income and wealth inequality, and make certain, finally, that health care in this country is a human right, not a privilege. I, uh, 45 seconds, Senator Warren, I'm just going to close it out here. You went out of your way. You went out of your way to call yourself a capitalist, yes, to separate yourself from him. Why? Yes, because I am. Look, Democrats want to beat Donald Trump, but they are worried. They are worried about gambling on a narrow vision that doesn't address the fears of millions of Americans across this country who see real problems and want real change. They are worried about gambling on a revolution that won't bring along a majority of this country. Amy and Joe's hearts are in the right place, but we can't be so eager to be liked by Mitch McConnell that oh, oh we forget how
how to fight the Republicans. Mayor Buttigieg has been taking money from big donors and changing his positions. Yeah, so it makes it unclear what it is he stands for other okay. than his Senator, own thank you. Please. Please. Senator Klobuchar, no, go ahead. You've got I'll Senator Klobuchar. Clear. Clear. You've had it. Senator Klobuchar, go ahead. you got the floor for 45. Thank you. Go. Number one, I have repeatedly said that we have to win big. And the way we win big is winning states like Nevada, but also winning the Senate races in Arizona and in Colorado and beyond. And the reason we want to do that is to send Mitch McConnell packing. And I think when you look at my history, I am the one that has done that. I am the one that can lead this ticket. And just because I am willing to talk about common ground, that's where America is. It All is right. not with Mitch McConnell, Thanks. who has 400 bills on his desk that should Thanks. pass if we get rid of him. It is because okay. I am willing I to respond? work with people and find see. common Let's ground. Respond, and that's Let's what we want uh, in a president, a, uh, Elizabeth. Let's catch we a don't want here. someone that we'll, looks at just plans. Senator, thank you. We need to take another break here. We'll return to the Paris Las Vegas in just a moment.